Good morning to Pastor Jordan. Good morning, brothers and sisters here in the sanctuary. And to you, my brothers and sisters that are watching this live stream. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. It's our sincere prayer that today's service will be an inspiration to us all throughout this week. May we all be blessed. Good morning, Zion. If you would, at this time, turn your attention to the baptismal pool. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. realize how blessed and how fortunate you are. For God has seen fit today to show you his favor by coming out of the world of darkness into the glorious light of his kingdom. God has so touched the hearts of three young people. Amen. It behooves us to recognize that God is entrusting unto us the responsibility of nurturing, teaching, loving, supporting these three so that they may grow in grace and in favor of Almighty God. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. of your faith and in obedience to God's command, I now baptize you, my sister, Sister Collins, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. of your faith, I now baptize you, my sister, Lizzie, in the 
name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Upon the profession of your faith, I now baptize you, my brother, Brother Omar, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God is indeed good. Yes. And the thing we need to recognize and realize, no matter where they go, they got baptized here at Zion Baptist Church Inc. Not necessarily into the membership of this church, but more importantly, into the kingdom of God. So we praise God. Hallelujah. Just been told <laughs> that we have another. Amen. So now, what I want y'all to do, y'all go on and sing glory unto God right now. Yes, sir. And after y'all get through singing, hopefully they'll be changed and dressed, and we gonna go on and baptize another. Hallelujah. Jesus, yes, 
Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, help me say, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Precious name Jesus. of Jesus, Jesus, the powerful name Jesus. of Jesus. The Lord is in his holy temple. Amen. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Let us pray. We worship, we honor, we adore, we magnify, we exalt your holy and righteous name. You are the creator the sustainer and the provider of our lives. And we say thank you. We thank you for an opportunity that we can come and bow our hearts, our thoughts, our bodies before you in worship. We pray that what is said and done this day bring you glory. We pray that it is sweet incense in your nostrils that you'll be pleased with our offerings of worship to you this day. Keep us, O oh Father. Grant us to walk from this place still in worship. As we continue through this week, may we still give you glory and honor in all the things we say and do. We thank you for Holy Spirit, for Jesus, for Father. You are welcome here in this place. 
Let us hear a word from you this day, that when we leave this place, we will not be the same. It's in the name of your son, Jesus, we pray and give thanks for all things. Amen, amen. and amen. Would you please stand to glory be to the Father. Take a seat. Amen. How many of you believe in the power of prayer? Amen. How many of you believe that God hears and answers prayer? not know that through COVID we went for months years without having water in the baptismal pool without having candidates to come forward and give their lives to Christ but after much prayer Sometimes we get down, sometimes we get despondent, sometimes we wonder, is God listening? Does God really hear our prayers? And when we get to a point of despair, when we're ready to give up, God says, not your time, but my time. And when he's ready, he opens up the floodgates of heaven and pours out blessings. So much so that we can't even contain them. Today you are witnessing the answer to prayer. Today you are witnessing God move on his time. Today you are witnessing because of your faithfulness and your prayer. God is still moving. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. profession of your faith and in obedience to God's command, I now baptize you, my brother, Aaron, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost.
No more, I can stay here all day. Hallelujah. What did you say, Percy? You want to get baptized again? <laughs> Let us continue to worship him in spirit and in truth.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Take a minute. Take a minute. Let's take a minute. Let's take a minute. Let's take a minute to think about all that God has given you. Let's take a minute. Let your man wonder for a minute. All that God has given you. And all that you have is his. Yes. He's given sight. He's given hearing. We can talk. We can walk. God gave it to you. And now it's time just to give him a portion. A portion. Yes, sir. If you don't believe me, try. God will fix your heart where you understand that giving is a worship. Amen. 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 And God will also fix your heart to make your heart happy that you gave unto yeah. him. Yeah. Now, if you ain't got it yet, stick around. Stick around. It's giving time. Amen. 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 Let's give him a hand clap of the praise. For all that God has given us. Now it's time for us to share with him. Ushers, come on. Just wanna praise you forever. Gracious God, our Father, we come now, Lord, with this offering. We pray that you consecrate and multiply it, Lord God, for the good of your kingdom. Furthermore, Lord God, bless the hearts that gave. Bless the hearts that wanted to give and did not have. But we know you're a God of resources, Lord God. We thank you for the opportunity to give, Lord God. All these things I ask in the blessed name of your darling son, Jesus the Christ. And all God's people say together. Amen. May we stand?
is prayer time. You can come to the altar. today. We celebrate in the new lives that came before you. Bless them, O oh Father. Keep your loving arms around them. Lord. Let them know who you are. Walk with them, O oh Lord. Protect them, Jesus. Keep them in your prayer. Keep all of us, Lord, in your prayer. Lord, we know that we have problems in this world. We have personal problems. Father, we have frustrations and anxieties and disappointments and problems with money, problems with family. The government has problems. There are problems everywhere, Lord, but we know you can fix it. We ask you, Father, to fix it, oh Lord. You know what we go through each and every day. You know each one of us by name. And we thank you for that, oh Lord. We ask that you move in our lives, Lord. We ask that you heal us. Heal our bodies from illnesses and sickness and problems with our thinking and our mind. And just move on us, oh Lord fix our problems and we thank you God we stand on your promises we know that you would never leave us you would never leave us you never forsake us we thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way and we thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit oh God oh you're such a kind and loving and forgiving God Teach us to come to you on our knees. Teach us to know when to say forgive us of all of our sins. Help us to repent from our iniquities. When we're wrong, oh Lord, help us to know that. You have brought us a mighty long way. We ask that you will continue to lead us to guide us, direct us, protect us, love us, fix all of the things that are not pleasing in your sight. Help us to know that. And we ask it all in your name. We ask, oh Lord, that you touch our pastor this morning and his wife be with them. Give Reverend Jonas the words to say. Help us to follow his words. Help us to read our Bibles every day and to know you more, serve you more as you lead us in this dark world. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask it all. 
and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen.
Isn't that good to know? That all your life, he has been faithful. Whether you've been faithful or not, that doesn't matter. All your life, he's been faithful. When you were doing things you shouldn't do, God was still faithful. When you were saying things you knew you shouldn't say, God was still faithful. All your life, beyond your ups and your downs, God is still there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Thank you, band. Y'all didn't tell me Ray Charles was going to be appearing today. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm, I'm thankful. Just waiting. <laughs> just watching. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, my brothers and sisters, it is good to see you. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, see, with with physical eyes, you can't see it. But with spiritual eyes, <laughs> there's a whole army of angels yes, sitting with you, protecting you, worshiping with you, yes. praising God. So no matter what problems or issues or concerns that you had when you walked through those doors, let them all go because you're in the presence of the Lord. Yeah, amen. 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 Thank you. He's got you. Yes, sir. Ooh, I got to go in one direction. But don't you know that in spite of dangers seen and dangers unseen, just think back over your lives of when certain things happened and you were afraid for your life, but yet and still, God made a way. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God is with you. And no devil, our emissary of the devil, can withstand the power of God. So what do we need to do? We need to learn how to call on the name of the Lord. And then we need to remember his goodness. Remember that it was he who woke you up this morning. Amen. Remember, it was he that put strength in your limbs so you could get up out of bed. Remember, it was he that put food on your table. Remember, it was he that gave you enough common sense to put your shoes on your feet pants on your legs, your shirt on your torso, a hat on your head. It was he that put you in your right mind. Let me go on. Yes, sir. But you see, I'm happy today because God didn't have to do what he did. Let me 
Let me see who I'm preaching to. <laughs> Is there anyone in this sanctuary under the sound of my voice? Don't don't fool me now. Don't 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 fool me. Is anyone here that knows that you know that you know that God has been good to you? I mean, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to wonder about it. You know that God has been good to you. resurrection sermon or Easter sermon, I talked about the necessity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I shared that Jesus' resurrection was necessary because it proved three things. The first thing it proved was that God's words are true and they will always be fulfilled. Whatever God says he's going to do, he will do. Yes, the second reason was that God hates sin. And the sin debt had to be paid with a perfect, non-blemished, sacrificial lamb. The sin debt had to be paid. Pigeon blood wouldn't do it. Turtle blood wouldn't do it. Lamb's blood wouldn't do it. Bullock's blood wouldn't do it. Only the blood of his only begotten son, Jesus yes, the Christ, yes, could pay the sin debt. But without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. And then the third and final reason was Jesus' resurrection ensures that all believers will have a new life of joy and promise. And to that I say hallelujah. But I'm not naive. You, you may think I am, but I'm not naive. I know that after clearly articulating those three facts, some people still couldn't wrap their heads around the fact that someone who was once pronounced dead, like Jesus, could ever come alive again. They doubted the story of Jesus' resurrection just like they doubt the fact that miracles still happen today. I know. Some people don't believe that miracles happen today. But do you not know, my brothers and sisters, that it's a miracle that some of you are even sitting in this congregation this morning? Yes, sir. Amen. You turned right when you wanted to turn left, not knowing that had you turned left, you would have run into an accident or something could have very easily taken your life. But God saw fit to speak Amen. to your spirit and tell you to turn right. God is still working miracles today. Some of us have sickness in our bodies and the doctors told us we would make it throughout 2023. But guess what? We're still here. Yes, sir. We're still here. Miracles still happen today. Well, if you're one of those doubters, recognize that you're not alone. 
since the first recording of this miracle, my brothers and sisters, the first recording of this miraculous event, there have always been doubters. I'd like to introduce you to one of those doubters today and follow that introduction up with a question. Please turn with me now to the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 and 25. The Gospel of John, the 20th chapter, verses 24 and 25. We have it prepared for you on our television monitors, uh, wherein we find these words. It reads, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the imprint of the nails and put my finger into the place of the nails and put my hand into his side, I shall not believe. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. From this text, I want to speak for just a few moments on the subject of, do you too doubt the resurrection? Let me use another form of English. Do you also Doubt the resurrection. With my underlying premise, my central theme, my main point being this. My brothers and sisters, as humans, without the ability to see into the future, we sometimes experience doubt. However, as Christians, we must learn to walk by faith and not by sight. We must trust in the word of God for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, some of you may be sitting there today wondering, well, Reverend, what is doubt? Webster defines doubt. It says, doubt is defined as being undecided or skeptical about something. It's to tend to disbelieve or distrust something or to experience a lack of conviction or certainty about something simply because we have not seen it, we have not touched it, we have not experienced it in some form or fashion. We are skeptical as to whether or not it ever happened. We are like those people born in the state of Missouri, the show me state. We are like the main character in our story today. We're like Thomas. Saints, if we really want to be blessed, we must walk by faith and not by sight. We must believe that Jesus Christ is the true and living Son of God and that he is the fulfillment of all biblical prophecy. We must believe that he lived, that he was crucified, that he died and was buried in a borrowed tomb, we must believe that three days later he arose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. We must believe that he ascended to heaven and now sits on the right side of almighty God representing us and interceding for us. We must believe that if we can confess these facts with our mouths and believe in our heart that all of this actually happened, then Jesus says that we will be saved and blessed beyond measure with eternal life. We must believe that. So the question is, 
do you believe? Or are you like doubting Thomas? Do you also doubt the resurrection? Last Sunday, I advised us that after Jesus' death, many of the disciples were walking around depressed, confused, scared, and in hiding, not fully understanding just what had happened and wondering what they should do next. And it wasn't until Jesus' resurrection, it wasn't until he appeared first to Mary and then to the disciples that their minds were finally opened. It wasn't until he walked them through the Old Testament scriptures and showed them his Christological fingerprints all through the Old Testament that they could fully understand and in turn know who he really was. I further explained that I felt some of us today are experiencing that same doubt, whether it's mental, psychological, Spiritual, financial, or relational. Many of us experience doubt at one time or another and feel as if we have missed out on something. Due to the vicissitudes of life and the negative situations we encounter, many of us feel as if we too have missed the mark. Are you here with me? However, I just stopped by to tell us today that no matter how gloomy, dark, or difficult our current situation may be, no matter how far we feel we have fallen away from God, no matter how far we feel we have missed the mark, no matter how many times we have failed with God, we can rise up again and successfully face any challenge. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I need you to understand. I need you to understand. That just attending church are performing a superficial reading of the scripture or listening to certain television preachers preach are just conversing with other people about Jesus will not save you. nor give you a clear understanding of who Jesus is. No, no, no. I contend that all of us need to spend time praying and effectively studying God's word in Bible study with other seeking saints in order, under, in order to understand that Jesus is the fulfillment of everything that was written in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. We need to spend time together as brothers and sisters in Christ, studying God's word together, praising God together, and fellowshipping together with the spirit of the Most High God. Oh, my brothers and sisters, what I'm attempting to say to you is that in our text today, we find that Thomas was experiencing doubt his mind was clouded by doubt, wonderment, and despair because he missed out on the first meeting Jesus had with the other disciples. And because he failed to assemble with the other disciples, he missed his blessing. That's why Hebrews 10, 25 tells us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Let me see if I can help you. You ever had a situation whereas your friends told you about a party or a function or a celebration that was coming up? 
and for whatever reason you decided not to attend that function. You could have gone, but you just decided, no, I'm not feeling it today. My back hurts, arthritis, bursitis has got me, my bunions hurt, <clears throat> got gout, just not going, don't feel it. And then the next day you go somewhere and a friend of yours comes up and they say, girl, you should have been there. So and so showed up and they acted a plum fool. They had everybody in the house laughing and playing and just acting a fool. We had a blast. You really missed it. And you sat there for a moment, frustrated and in despair, and said, Well, I could have taped up my big toe and I wouldn't have felt it. I could have put on a knee brace and arthritis might not have been that bad. I could have done all these things, but instead I chose to miss it. I wasn't there, and I missed it. Thomas missed his blessing. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm simply saying that we are not to miss Sunday service or Wednesday Bible study if we want to be blessed and have more than just a cursory, superficial understanding of God's word. And that's why in 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible commands us to study, to show ourselves approved unto God as workmen that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I said I was going to be sharp, but I'm full. How many of you have experienced the aha? moment. In hands, the, the aha moment. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm saying maybe in your own private study, you've read a particular scripture over and over and over and over again, but didn't quite fully understand what that scripture was trying to get across. But yet, you got together with other saints of the Most High God. You got together with other believers in Almighty God. And because you all were together and you were studying the word to, uh, together, all of a sudden they read that scripture and it's BAM! Yeah, I just woke some of y'all up. BAM! It became clear. And you said, uh -huh. that's what. God was trying to get me to see. Let me help somebody. Mark 5. I thank God that I woke up and was clothed in my right mind. How many of you heard that? I woke up and I was clothed in my right mind. And you've had plenty of preachers and plenty of other people saying, yeah, I woke up and I was clothed in my right mind. That's not what the scripture says. The scripture says that I woke up and, and I was clothed. Meaning you had clothes on. All right? You had clothes on and you were in your right mind. So we have to study together to show ourselves approved, the workman that needeth not be ashamed. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if Thomas had been there, he would have learned that Jesus fulfilled all of the prophecies pertaining to the coming Messiah. Do you not know that there are over 400 prophecies in the Old Testament which point to the coming Messiah and to his life and also to his death? 400. Jesus Christ perfectly fulfilled every single one of them. The odds of someone doing that who was not the Messiah are too great to even conceive of the future. It is impossible. But here are just a few more examples of fulfilled prophecies that Jesus showed there. The first example, Isaiah 7, 14 reads, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, 
a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of Mary, a young Jewish virgin. Prophecy fulfilled. Micah 5, 2, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou being little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of there shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Put a pin in that. What I want to say to those of you who may feel that you are small in stature, in reference to the eyes of God, don't you let the adversary deceive you. Everyone is important in the eyes of God. We are all children of God. And God has a purpose for you in your life. Our task is to find that purpose and to fulfill that purpose so that God might be glorified. You are somebody, you are important to Almighty God. Psalms 41.9 even foretells of Judas' betrayal. For it reads, yea, mine own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, had lifted up his heel against me. Saints, in this gospel, John has traced the development of unbelief which culminated in Jesus' enemies crucifying him. Conversely, John also traced the disciples' development of faith which was now climaxed in Thomas. The disciples were affirming Jesus' resurrection to Thomas, but he remained unconvinced. He wanted bodily proof of Jesus' risen state the reappearance of Jesus a week later provided the opportunity that Thomas wanted. Jesus miraculously entered a room with locked doors. He asked Thomas to touch him and to stop doubting and believe. Oh, what a forgiving type of love that Jesus showed Thomas. You know what's important about that? What that tells us is no matter how many times you've failed him, no matter how many times you've let him down, no matter how many times you've disappointed others, God still loves you. Yes. And if you turn from your wicked ways and turn back to him, guess what? He's waiting on you with open arms, willing to accept you and to use you in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Thomas saw the Lord. <laughs> and forgot all about demanding proof. He forgot about his demand to see the imprint of the nails in Jesus' hand. He forgot about his demand to place his hands into Jesus' side. Instead, just the sight of Jesus' wound won his heart. Jesus then gave Thomas a forthright challenge to a personal commitment, and guess what? Jesus is giving that same challenge to us this morning. Do you too Doubt the resurrection of Jesus? Are you ready to stop doubting and believe? Are you ready to walk by faith and not by sight? Oh, my brothers and sisters, I don't want you to miss this. Thomas's response, my Lord and my God, is the high point of the gospel. Here, we have a doubting man, a skeptical man, a man who missed out on his first opportunity to meet up with Jesus, confronted by the evidence of Jesus' resurrection, making a personal confession and announcement to the world that Jesus, the man of Galilee, is indeed the Messiah manifested in the flesh. Of particular interest to me is what happens next because Jesus then pronounced a blessing on all who would come to faith without the help of of a visible bodily manifestation to them. This blessing comes to all who believe based on the proclaimed gospel and the evidence of its validity. Saints, we must do the same thing today. We must not doubt the resurrection. We must make a personal profession of faith as you saw the four 
sons and daughters of God do today and belief in Jesus Christ. Believers, believers living today are not deprived of seeing him physically. Instead, it's just the opposite. Believers today are the recipients of his special blessing. For Jesus himself said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Saints, as I come to a close, and the voices of Zion come forward to lead us in an invitational hymn. I want you to understand that as humans without the ability to see into the future, yes, we sometimes experience doubt. However, as Christians, we must learn to walk by faith and not by sight. We must have faith and trust in the word of God, for faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Saints, if we really want to be blessed, we must believe that Jesus Christ is the true and living Son of God and that he is the fulfillment of all biblical prophecy. We must believe that he lived, he was crucified, he died and was buried in a borrowed tomb. We must believe my brothers and sisters, that three days later he arose with all power in heaven and earth in his hands and we must believe that he ascended into heaven and now sits on the right side of almighty God representing us and interceding for us. Yes. We must believe that if we can confess these facts with our mouths and believe in our hearts that all of this happened, then Jesus says we will be saved and blessed beyond measure with eternal life. I'm happy today. Yes. Because no matter how many times I messed up in the past, no matter how many times I mess up today, no matter how many times I mess up in the future, I know that Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior, is sitting on the right side of God and is telling God the Father, that's okay, forgive him. He's my child. He messed up today, but I bled for him. He messed up yesterday, but I died for him. He messed up the day before that, but guess what? I got up for the grave just because I love him and just because I want him to be with us forever in heaven. Jesus is doing the same thing for you, sitting on the right high, right side of God. So Zion, Let's not be like Doubting Thomas. Let's not doubt the resurrection of Jesus. Let's not miss the mark by not being where we should be. By not being in church with our brothers and sisters worshiping God together. Fellowshipping together. Rather, let us be like those who have not seen, but yet believe. If you're here today, and you've never made a public profession of your faith in Jesus Christ, we invite you to come and do so today. Will you come forward and profess your faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord? Will you stand with us now? And if you've never met Jesus, you've never confessed him as the Lord, will you come forward and give your hand to one of our spiritual counselors and let them pray with you and for you and lead you into the kingdom of Almighty God. The doors of this local congregation are open. We invite you to come. Will you come? I, I will trust. Is there one today?
thank God for the visitation of his Holy Spirit. We thank God for you and your presence today. As is our custom on every first Sunday, we are obedient to the two ordinances of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The first being that of baptism. We witness that today with these new brothers and sisters in Christ. The second being the sharing of the Lord's Supper. So at this time, we will, will you prepare your hearts for receiving the Lord's Supper. Brothers and sisters, the Bible teaches us that on that day, as Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, that he looked out among them and saw the looks of concern, fear, despair, and his heart went out to them. He wanted to assure them that no matter what they had experienced or no matter what they would experience, he would be with them. And not just for the day, not just for the moment, but through all eternity. So Jesus looked at them as I am looking at you now. And he took the bread and lifted it and prayed and blessed it and said, this bread represents my body, which is going to be broken for you. And then he took the fruit of the vine and the cup and he lifted the cup and he blessed it and said, this cup is filled with the fruit of the vine, which represents my blood, which is going to be shed for you. As often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you show forth my sacrifice, my death, my burial, and my resurrection. Saints of God, today we commemorate the wondrous and wonderful sacrifice that Jesus made for us. The Bible goes on to say, let a man examine himself and let him not take the bread nor the fruit of the vine unworthily. My brothers and sisters, none of us are worthy. But yet if in our hearts we know that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but yet we also know that with Jesus all things are possible, so we endeavor to serve him as faithfully as we can, and we do the best that we can and we acknowledge the sin in our life and confess it unto him, then my brothers and sisters, we are able to share because in and of ourselves, we don't have the strength, but with Jesus and with the power of his Holy Spirit living within us, we can overcome all sin. I'm gonna ask now, that Deacon Percy Ross would ask the Lord's blessings over these elements. Amen, Pal. Most Heavenly Father, we thank you first for giving this day. 
We thank you, Father, for what you have done personally for us. Father, we ask you to bless this bread, which represents your broken body. And we ask you, Lord, to bless the wine, which is the shed blood that you have seen for us and all. Knowing that it is you, your love for all of us. That knowing what we will be going through, that we can deal with, go through the situation with you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. down for a second and I'm going to continue to do this for a while until we get good and used to it as the deacons serve these communion cups please recognize that the bread is on the bottom so flip it over and take the bread out first flip it over take the bread out first you are looking so beautiful and so resplendent. My brother back there in that white shirt, I want that white to remain white. And we don't want you to open up the wine, then flip it over and have a nice red stain on that white shirt. Amen? So open the bottom first, take the bread, then flip it back open, and open the fruit of the vine. Amen? Reverend, why do you have to do that every Sunday? Because this is a new process for us. And I don't want anybody <laughs> to make a mistake. Amen? Amen. This went somewhere in here.